As we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, we as believers, we are to extend the love that God has shown to us to all of those that are around us. We are to be liberal in our forgiving. When those who have done us wrong, when they correct themselves, when they acknowledge that they have done wrong, and when they seek our forgiveness, we should forgive them. There is no number that we should put on the amount of times that we forgive those that are around us. We are to be liberal in our forgiving because that's how God is towards us. God, he does not hold our sins against us. The Lord, when we confess our sins to him, he is willing and he is able, he is ready to forgive us of our sins. We'll see that here in our Sunday school lesson this week as we take a look here at the parable of the prodigal son. We are told here in the 11th and in the 12th verse of our lesson this week that there was a certain man and this certain man he had two sons. And we'll see there in the 12th verse that the younger son said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. As we do with all of the parables, we must understand who is being represented here in our parable this week. The certain man, the dad here, the father in our parable today, is representative of the Lord. That should be plain and clear. The two sons, they're representative of two types of believers. We find that the oldest son will be representative of the disciplined believer. We don't get into him much in our lesson this week. While the younger son, the main focus of our lesson this week, represents the believer who is undisciplined. Now what we see here in these verses is that the younger son, he was desiring to get his inheritance. He was desiring to get it actually very early from his dad. His dad wasn't in poor health, but his son, his younger son wanted his inheritance. Now we don't see the reason just yet as to why the younger son wanted his inheritance early, but we see that the father does give him what he asked for. Now here in the 13th verse, we'll see exactly why the younger son wanted his inheritance early. The younger son, he didn't want to stay under his dad's roof any longer. Now I believe that this actually says a lot about both the younger son and the dad. Let's begin with the dad first. I believe that what this says about the dad, what this shows us is that this dad was actually a really good dad. He was maybe even too good of a dad in that he gives his inheritance. He gives the younger son his inheritance right away without even questioning it. So I also think you'll see here later on in our lesson that this dad, he may have been strict in how he raised his sons and that's not a bad thing. He raised his sons to be of faith. He raised them to be disciplined. The younger son, when he got of age, was tired of having to be obedient to his dad's rules. As we see, he took his inheritance and we are told there in the 13th verse that he wasted it. He wasted it with prodigal living. Prodigal living is being wasteful. It is being reckless in how you go about living. Now that the younger son was no longer living under his dad's roof, under his father's roof, he chose to live it up and he chose to live it up in a reckless manner. I would say that the younger son, he lived in a manner that young children and teens that they dream of living of as they live under their parents' roof. Once he got out of the parents' house, he chose to live it up and eventually living it up in the manner that he chose to live, it eventually caught up with him. We're told there that as he ran out of his inheritance, there was a severe famine that occurred. So the younger son, with that severe famine occurring and with him running out of his inheritance, it was now time for him to get to work. He took up having to work feeding pigs. The 16th verse shows us that things were so bad for the younger son that he would look at the slop that he was feeding pigs and he would desire to eat it himself because he couldn't afford anything to eat. And then there was nobody that was there to help him out. Now, I would say that this verse tells us a lot about how the world works when it comes to prodigal living, when it comes to living it up. 
if you're out there and you're living it up with the rest of the world, so long as you have it, so long as you have a lot, the world will be right there with you, parting it up, living it up right there with you. But when you fall on hard times, what does the world do? We find that in our world today, the world is very slow to move to help those who fall on hard times. And that was no different for the younger son. He fell on hard times and again, the world was slow to help him out. We as believers, we cannot be like the world. Where the world is slow to help uplift someone, we as believers, we have to be different than the world. We must move quickly to uplift those who are in need of help, regardless of if they mess up or not. We as believers, we must move swiftly and we must move out of love to lift those up that are around us. So in the following verses here, the 17th, the 18th, the 19th verse, we'll see that the younger son had to think some things over in his life. Things were getting rough for him. And so we'll see that he considered how many workers that worked under his father how they didn't want for anything. In fact, they had much. They had bread to spare. They weren't worried about having to eat the slop of pigs. Yet here the younger son was living the life, right? But now he was desiring to eat the slop of pigs. So what would you do if you were in the younger son's shoes? Would you go back home to dad? Would you go back home to your parents for them to help you out? Or would you try to strike it out on your own even more? I imagine that some of us, we probably would have been too afraid to go back home. We probably would have been too afraid to go and look our parents in, in their eyes, knowing that we have messed up, knowing that we live recklessly, knowing that we wasted what they gave to us. We wouldn't go back home. We would probably think to ourselves, man, I need to go out and I need to go and find more work to do. But within the frame of this parable, since we are speaking spiritually here, the right thing for the son to do was to think exactly in the manner that he was thinking. It was time for him to own up to the manner in which he lived. It was time for him to go back home. He was in need of help. He needed someone to help him out. Who better to help him out than his dad? We'll see that the younger son, that he made up his mind. He made up his mind to go back home. He made up his mind to go back to his dad. He made his mind up to go back to where help was. And so he began to prepare himself, right? He prepared himself to go before his dad and to humbly acknowledge that he messed up, that he had done wrong. Now I say humbly here because the younger son will see thinks to himself that he isn't even worthy to be called his dad's son any longer. Now you'll notice that this lesson, it has quickly become a lesson about pride versus humility. Something that many of us struggle with today is that we cannot let go of our pride. We cannot admit when we have messed up. We cannot admit when we have done wrong. And again, that's when many of us go wrong. That's where many of us err, that we are too prideful to acknowledge when we have messed up. We are too prideful to correct ourselves when we have messed up. We have to learn to be humble. We have to move in a manner of humility. Humility will acknowledge when we have erred. If you are humble, if you are of humility, you will make corrections. You will like the younger son should do here. You would go back home, acknowledge that you have done wrong, that you have messed up to your dad and that you are looking for help. So the younger son, he left his pride behind him and he returned back home to his dad who saw him coming in the distance and dad wasn't angry with him, wasn't furious with him. Dad ran out with compassion, we're told, was already sympathizing. He was just simply happy to see his son. He went out with compassion to greet him. The son, the younger son will see there acknowledge that he has sinned against heaven. Which to me, again, it speaks to the kind of house that the younger son was raised in. Again, dad was a man who desired for his sons to be disciplined. He was strict in how he raised them. And we'll see that he was strict according to the word of God. Dad was a man of faith. So the son, we'll see, humbly said that he was not worthy to be called his son. Again, the son, I guess remembering how he was raised here, 
again said humbly, humbly here, not of pride, humbly, that he was no longer worthy to be called his son. To that point, we'll see there in the 22nd verse that the father seemingly brushed it all to the side, right? Again, didn't hold it against the younger son. The father brushing it to the side there had a robe put on his son, had a ring put on his younger son's hand, had sandals put on his feet. I say that the father had forgiven the younger son. So this parable, it shows us a great deal about how God, how his love and how he forgives us, how it works. Many of us, we are too prideful to go to the Lord, to ask for forgiveness, to acknowledge that we have done wrong. Many of us, we are afraid of going before the Lord and admitting that we have done wrong. We think that God will judge us harshly for all of our wrongdoings. But the truth of the matter is exactly what John said in his first epistle, the first chapter in the ninth verse, where John, he tells us that if we go to the Lord and if we confess our sins to him, God is both faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us of our unrighteousness. Something that we as believers today must understand, and even if you don't believe, but you're trying to learn to believe, is that the Lord, he looks for you to come to him. God, he is a welcoming God. He desires for you to come to him when you have erred. He desires for you to come to him and confess your sins to him, confess your wrongdoings to him so that he can relieve you of the guilt, the burden of your sins. God does not want you to walk around with that heavy weight. Again, he is a loving God. And we see that more here in our parable for this week. So the father not only dressed the younger son back up, but we'll see there in the 23rd and the 24th verse that the father threw a celebration. He celebrated his younger son's return. The father, he had a fatted calf killed for a great feast and for the celebration. And again, he was extremely happy. Why was he so happy? Scripture tells us why he was so happy. He said that he was happy because his younger son wasn't dead, but was made alive. And I want you to understand that that made alive there is talking about being made alive spiritually just as well as physically here, right? His younger son was lost, the dad said, but was now found. So again, I say to you today, what this parable has shown us is that God, he is a loving God. He is a God who will forgive liberally. So we ought not be afraid. We ought not be ashamed. We ought not be prideful, too prideful to go before the Lord when we have done wrong, acknowledge our wrong, and then seek his help. Don't be too prideful to go to the Lord to seek his help. Have humility. We as believers today, again, we must be meek. We must be lowly. We must be humble. We must be able to acknowledge when we need God's help. And we can't be afraid to go to him when we have said to the Lord, oh, I know a better way than you. We can't be afraid to go. We cannot be ashamed to go to the Lord and say, oops, my bad. I messed up. So again, this is the story of forgiveness. The Lord, he will let you go out there and do as you desire. But when you find that you are in need of help, when you find that you have messed up, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. As we've seen today, the Lord, he is willing. He is welcoming. He is ready to forgive you of your sins, to greet you with a smile, to hug you, kiss you on your cheek. And then again, he's ready to throw a party when you come back to him and say, Lord, my bad, I need you. So let us move about again, knowing that we can go to God today and seek forgiveness and he will forgive us.